Good morning students after receiving a good response from our series on literary movements I have decided to create another series which is on literary theory I'm going to cover everything in this series in a hope that uh, this subject literary theory gets a little easier for the students studying English literature so I have already discussed the history of literary theory in my previous video and then there is another video on the difference between literary theory and literary criticism. I have given the link of this playlist in the description below. So keep on visiting this channel so that you may find more videos in this literary theory series. Alright, so having said that, in this video we are going to discuss structuralism which came during 1950s in France and in 1970s it came to Britain or you can say translated it to English language for the wider population you can say. Also remember that most of the theories um, were so much at peak during 1970s and 1980s. Even Peter Berry writes in his work Beginning Theory that 1970s or 1980s saw the high watermark in literary theory. So we can say that during 1970s or 1980s, uh, this literary theory subject was at uh, was at peaks, and a lot of theories uh, were revived after in during 1970s or 1980s. All right. So structuralism came in 1950s in France, and then later on came to Britain in 1970s. And it simply means to study the wider structure rather than structure rather than studying the individual parts. For instance, in New Criticism, we study the text which is self-contained in itself. The New Criticism which came in 1920s, we are much more focused on the individual text which is self-contained. But structuralist approach is something which is not only uh, text-bound, but it is also studying the larger structure behind the text. For instance, if you are a structuralist and if you try to study the work Women in Love by D.S. Lawrence, you do not analyze the relationship between the protagonist you do not analyze the relationship between uh, the male and female uh, you can say the characters which is present in that novel but instead as a structuralist you will try to find the relation between male and female in a wider structure this wider structure of male and female is you can say visible among all the works of literature as a structuralist we are moving away from the text and trying to find out the structures behind the text we are trying to understand the larger abstract system of structures uh, behind the individual work it's just like we are studying the whole body rather than studying the individual parts of this body like fingers like legs we are not uh, very much focused on studying the individual part we are not focused on studying the individual text but we are focusing on the whole body part or you can say body as a whole or you can say the larger structure in which this smaller you can say individual work exists as i have just mentioned structuralism came around 1970s but the roots of this structuralism the ideas from where claude levi strauss uh, took this you can say the theories of structuralism was in the roots of ferdinand de Saussure's work course in general linguistics published in 1915 we find this uh, structuralism becoming an academic entity uh, during 1970s but the roots are there in 1950s Ferdinand de Saussure who was a Swiss linguistic and where, where he published his work course in general linguistic. So, Alright, so if you want the notes on these particular theories, you can simply check out our study material on English literature from our website limitlessliterature.com. We have mentioned all the theories and the theorists associated with these concepts in our study material. You can simply check the link in the description below to know more about our material. Alright, so let's get back to our discussion on Ferdinand de Saussure, who uh, brought out the ideas, who brought out the concepts, which was then later on adopted by the structuralist. So according to Ferdinand de Saussure, a language is not something which reflects the society. Language is a separate entity from the society. Language is not the reflection of world. It is arbitrary. The word Nakul Grover has nothing to do with this individual. The word cat has nothing to do uh, with the animal or with four legs. The same goes for the animal dog. The word dog has nothing to do uh, with the animal with the four legs. It is just through repetition of words through which we get associated with the personality, with the, you can say, the outside world. So the language is not the reflection of the world. You must study the language 
as something a different a system a system you can say a separate system a separate body and further he explains that and this is the science these are all are the science the language is a sign system which has some signifier and which has some signified signifier is something you can say the word cat is a signifier and which is forming in your mind the concept is signified so the signifier and signified is something is a system of signs these words are signs actually and these are uh, signifiers which is making some concepts in our mind and that is signified if i say cat and that is signifier and the image that is forming in my mind is signified and further he goes on to explain that if you have to explain something you always have to explain and these terms in direct opposition or in direct relevance to each other for instance if someone ask you how to define cat we will say that cat is something which is not dog what is dog dog is something which is not tiger okay so what is yellow color we cannot define yellow color so we have to define yellow color in opposition to each we will say that yellow color is something which is not orange what is orange which is not something black what is black which is not something white what is male which is not something female so whenever we have to explain something we try to explain it in the relevance or in the direct opposition of it so sure itself says in language there are only differences without fixed terms without fixed terms this is enlightening you see whenever uh, there is you can say the train the name of a train that vande matram express so this train is not going somewhere to vande matram express we are just putting the name there is no fixed term we are just putting the name of the train vande matram express whereas this vande matram has nothing to do uh, with the train so so sure says in language there are only differences without fixed terms and this concept of sochor was further uh, taken by the structuralist in 1950s the french structuralist and later on used uh, by them and translated into english you can say it came to the wider population in britain in 1970s and then there are two terms given by ferdinand de chichor that is long and parole a long is something a wider system a wider structure parole is a part of that structure you can say long is system set of rules parole is how we use those rules for instance theater of absurd it is a big genre it is long whereas the play samuel beckett's waiting for godot is you can say parole waiting for godot is something parole because it uses the wide structure theater of absurd to explain this ferdinand de chichor took the example of the game chess and there he says that a long is something the set of rules we know the rules of chess but how do we perform in a game is parole so long is the set of rules and how we use them is parole the same way any work is a part of parole any work is a part of wider structure ds lorenz women in love it is just a simple parole and it must be a part of big structure so when you study women in love you are not only studying the relation between the characters but you are trying to correlate it with the wider structure which is prevalent throughout the literature in all the novels and so this is a little about structuralism and we are only trying to study through ugc net perspective not to become some intellectual person not to uh, do some phd in structuralism so we are only going to discuss a few details a bit of study and we are going to discuss this structuralism in the later uh, part of our series all right so in the next video we will try to uh, continue our discussion on structuralism so i hope you found the video worth your time if you are new to this channel then don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more updates on english literature that's it for this video thank you